uh, I'll first go through the slides and afterwards uh, do some kind of live demo uh, to make things a little easier. I'll not switch back and forth. Yeah, so uh, my session will be about developing telephony functionality for Plasma Mobile um, using PhoneZim. Uh, yeah, first, let's talk about why you would want to use PhoneZim instead of a real device. Some of you probably own Pine phones and so on. Um, obviously, sending many test SMS can be expensive, just like uh, calling people all the time, which you have to calculate that most of those calls will probably not work if you are developing. So you will waste a lot of money if you use a real SIM card and modem. Deploying code to the phone takes time uh, because the phone doesn't have a very powerful processor usually. And you can probably do some kind of cross compiling, but all of that will be much more complicated than using the computer for development. Um, also, on the Pine phone, for example, uh, bugs outside of the application you are developing could affect debugging, for example, if something is not yet um, working in the kernel or other user space processes. Um, obviously, not everyone has a Pine phone or Librem 5 at all, so um many people have to use phone them anyway um phone them is a cute based application that simulates a gsm modem, modem. Um, its functionality includes uh, simulating calls sms but also the sim toolkit which is usually an application running on the sim card itself um, it also can simulate all kinds of things like signal, strengths, carrier, name, and, and so on, uh, which will be displayed in the Plasma phone shell. Um, and PhoneZim is basically implemented like any Ophono driver. It's just a plugin included in Ophono that speaks to PhoneZim. So it won't make any difference to the application using Ophono whether it's a phone them or a real modem driver. Um, so phone them was initially developed for Nokia as part of Qtopia and later Qt Extended. Um, but as we all know, it doesn't exist anymore. So it was later transferred to Intel apparently, which can be seen and at the copyright notices in the code. Um, nowadays, it's hosted in the Ophono team on kernel.org, which is also still um, kind of owned by Intel, but it's open for everyone to contribute, and uh, contributions can be done through the Ophono mailing list. But of course, uh, the most important thing about it is how we can use it for development. So first, we need to get running. There is the issue that the current stable release, which is 1.21 at this point, um, is still based on Qt4. Intel seems to use it actively, but they are not really Qt developers, so they didn't really notice Qt4 was old. Um, I talked to them, and they are just using one VM image, which works for them. And yeah, anyway, so. Anyone, everyone but Intel can also use it. Um, it was ported to Qt5. Um, because the developers are, as I said, not Qt developers, but uh, mostly focused on C, it, does, it uses an auto, auto tools based build system. Uh, but compiling is uh, easy enough if you use uh, the default slash US USR graph prefix and nothing, or slash USR local prefix and nothing special. Um, in addition to phone them, you will need uh, Ophono, of course, so you can develop things for Ophono. 
Um, phone number itself doesn't depend on Ophono, but um, Ophono needs to be available at runtime. And yeah. um, phone number is not enabled by default in Ophono, so we need to edit etc Ophono phone conf and uncomment everything so it looks like the code in the slide. Afterwards, we need to restart Ophono to apply the new configuration. Uh, Phonedom does uh, supports uh, a GUI argument to tell it to use the GUI instead of the default DBus interface. Um, in this case, I wrote the full path because in the previous step, we just installed Phonedom and it might be that USR local bin is not yet in your path before you logged in and start uh, or yeah, logged in to your session on your device again. But usually you can just write phones and, and not slash use our local bin phones and so on. Um, the most important thing is that we pass it the configuration file. It can de uh, emulate different kinds of modems in theory, but in all cases I needed, the default configuration was totally fine. Um, also, this configuration defines ports of phone, no phone them uses locally. The defaults are totally fine and we don't really need to edit anything there. Um, once we started that command, we will notice that nothing happens, which can be confusing at first, but the GUI doesn't start until the modem is enabled, which uh, Ophono can tell the modem to do. For that, we will need uh, the Ophono scripts. In some distributions, they are packaged uh, mostly, most commonly, uh, as a package called Ophono scripts. Usually, those packages are not available on all distributions. Um, if they are not available on yours, you can find them uh, on in the Ophono repository in the tests directory, and just use it from the source directory of Ophono without having to compile Ophono yourself. Uh, on this, if it is included in your distro, it's probably located in USR share or phone scripts. Um, in the following commands, you will have to uh, replace the path if it's not coming from uh, the most in the two scripts we are going to use for now are enable modem and online modem. Um, the names pretty much show what they do after you executed the enable modem script, the GUI should appear, but the modem is not yet online, so it doesn't have any connection or it doesn't emulate any connection. Um, once the window has started to appear, you can have set the modem online using the second script. Um, there are some common issues that can appear when using them. Um, they are caused by the Ophono scripts not being extremely clever. They user usually try to use first modem available, and uh, so you need to make sure there is nothing else uh, seeming like a modem to Ophono. Um, the common issue is that Bluetooth, the Bluetooth stack also has support for speaking to remote modems, and Ophono supports that. So in some cases, Ophono might think that, that some device you previously connected to your Bluetooth adapter has a modem as well, and it tries to use this one. Just disabling Bluetooth will work around it easily. Um, yeah. There's the typo in the presentation. Um, yeah. But uh, in general, if, it, if the scripts uh, print out some debus errors, the most common uh, issue is that Ophono is probably not running. Yet yeah, this can be easily fixed. On system D distros, it's surface Ophono start. Um, other distros might either use um, sysv in its script, so slash uh, etc init.d Ophono start or similar things. Um, once we have the Ophono phone them GUI running. It, we can see all the different functionality it provides. What 
uh, we most commonly want to use for Pleasant Mobile is the SMS tab. Uh, the calls tab is hiding behind the arrow there. Uh, at the bottom, you can see that we can enter an operator name or test this for which will be useful for testing LTE and GSM settings in the shell. Um, all AT commands the modem uses are displayed at the right of the window. So every time an SMS arrives, or, uh, so is sent by the application or is faked to arrive by the modem, it will appear in there. And of course, all other uh, actions will also leave AT commands there. Um, one interesting feature of Phonem, which is not currently, uh, or Pleasant Mobile currently doesn't use it, is um, emulating the SIM toolkit. Uh, of course, Phonem doesn't actually include an emulator for the SIM utils based on Java card, but it uh, implements the same way of communicating to, as the SIM card would do. This is mostly based on numbers defined to do some special functionality, and both sides then have to know what this number means. Uh, so if you want to understand uh, how SIM toolkit and Java card works, um, this is actually pretty useful to understand it. There are also good talks on YouTube. I think uh, Sentu knows about them because he recommended them to me in the first place. Uh, yeah. So the source code of Phonem is also useful to understand this kind of functionality. If anyone wants to implement SIM toolkit in Plus Mobile, this would be the place to start. This is a, a slide. We are now moving a little bit away from the main topic, but it is important to do anything useful with phone them in Plasma Mobile context. Uh, usually applications and shell do not communicate directly with Ophono, but in most cases use uh, telepathy, which uh, then needs the telepathy of Phono backend to be installed. So it, telepathy can actually uh, talk to our Phono. Uh, telepathy is a framework providing abstractions for all kinds of communication in the more human sense, uh, like uh, calls, um, messages, t in theory, even video chats and so on. Um, for Blender Mobile, we only use the voice call and text channel features for now. Uh, if you need more direct communication with Ophono for some application, for example, it is used uh, by the shell to uh, find out the carrier name and so on, and also the signal strength. Um, there is libq Ophono, which is the newer of two Ophono queued binding libraries. It is developed by Yola, so the good thing is we don't have to care much about it. It is developed for us. Um, just in case you need uh, more direct communication for some application, Ophono provides a DBus interface. Um, if you end up writing for this DBus interface in Qt, you can upstream it to libq Ophono because that's mostly how libq Ophono also works. Um, for example, the SIM toolkit is as of now not yet. Uh, supported in libq or phono as far as I know. So that would be the possible uh, use case for this. Um, now, do you have any questions about things that appeared so far? Otherwise, I will go on with the small demo.
Okay, I don't see any questions. So let's see if screen sharing works. Um, so I will quickly demonstrate what I previously showed in the presentation slides. Uh, first, we start phone them with the default uh, config file and the GUI argument. Nothing will happen at first. Then we switch to a new tab where we can run the orphonal scripts. So first we enable the modem. Phonem will open up and then we can set it online. Now it's ready. And then we can use it to, for example, send SMS. Here we can enter the virtual sender and send the message. And then, in theory, it should appear here. And yeah, we can answer to it. And yeah, now it wasn't very well visible, so I will do it again. You can see that something happens here in the AT command, so the message is sent to the modem. Yeah, that's pretty much it for now.